So you've just run a PB on your GPS and I'm here to tell you your watch is lying to you and today we're going to tell you why. I've just measured a route in my hood and I'm going to run it with four devices. I'm using Sunto, Garmin, Polar and I'm going to use Strava on my phone. We have Lindsay on the street, I've got Dev here on the track testing exactly the same thing. So all the same devices and trying to measure how accurate this GPS is. We're constantly having debates with people around the distance that they measure on their watch versus what the race said versus you know whether they're running on a track and really your watch is working off measurement from a satellite back down and so you can't completely judge the accuracy of, of that watch. When we're talking about people in race environments, the racers measure their distance and so this is what we, we're trying to figure out today is how accurate are these GPS devices. Even though using GPS data during a race is a bad idea, it is still a great tool for training. The reason for that is because our physiology doesn't change from one thing to another over a solid line. We've got what we call transitional thresholds. So if you are training in what we call zone 2 or the aerobic zone, as you get towards the upper end of zone 2 or aerobic training, you start to have a, a change in the contribution from anaerobic versus aerobic and because of that as long as we stay away from those lines even though the gps speed that it's giving you is slightly inaccurate if you aim for the middle it's still going to give you a perfectly good workout and you're still going to be training the physiology you set out to train in that session there are a number of factors that can affect the accuracy of your GPS readings uh, and the first of those is, is your surroundings, right? So if you are running in an area with lots of trees around you, that is definitely going to affect that GPS reading. If you're running in a city with tall high-rise buildings, again, definitely going to affect the, the accuracy of that GPS. I know when I ran Chicago Marathon last year, the race starts, you go under a bridge, you take a left into the city, and GPS readings are gone for the first 5Ks or 3 miles and so it's really, really Really important to not rely on that reading if you're trying to pace your race. There's a few studies that have mentioned that the higher you go in elevation the uh, less accurate those GPS readings are. Another aspect is, is, is loops. If you're running continued loops around a track or something that is also going to be slightly inaccurate and, and I know I've spoken to Ntutu about this before with his training. He has set loops that he trains on where he's measured that distance and every single time he uses his watch he gets a different reading and so again just, just really be uh, specific about what you're analyzing in your training data when it comes to using your GPS. Let's talk about the implications of using GPS on race day. Most of us go into a race with some sort of time goal. So you might be trying to run a sub four hour marathon, a sub 150 half marathon, whatever your time goal might be, means you have a pacing strategy or should have a pacing strategy in place. Now, if your GPS is reading inaccurately, as Shona mentioned, things like built up cities, running through a tunnel, sometimes bad weather, all of those things will affect how accurate your GPS is reading. That's going to throw off the distance or route markers. So you'll often find when you're running, the route might say you're five kilometers into a race and your garment says you're at 4.3, for example. Now by throwing that distance off and how the GPS does its calculation on pace, you solely start to focus on what your watch is telling you your pace should be for your particular pace strategy. If that is off, that's going to throw your entire strategy out. It means you may start too fast. It means you may actually be starting a little bit slow and falling behind the curve when it comes to you trying to chase that goal by the end. This becomes even more sort of focused when you are on the limit of making a goal. So for example, some races might have a cutoff and you need to make that cutoff. That's already a stretch for you to make. And now suddenly you've got inaccurate readings that's throwing your entire pace off you don't realize it until much later in the race because you're pretty confident that your watch is telling you what it should be telling you and now all of a sudden you realize with 5k's to go in your marathon or your ultra marathon all of a sudden hang on I'm not going to make the time or you've blown up because you've just got nothing left in the tank because you might have started out too fast so it has a massive implication on race day when it comes to getting the pace strategy right and sticking to a plan that works for you. 
Lindsay is going to go into the details now on how you can work around it and make sure you're not relying on your GPS's pace. The reason why you shouldn't rely on GPS data in a race is very simply because of the inaccuracy of GPS versus the measured course. Now this is an argument I have all the time with runners when they try and tell me they ran faster than they did or that a race is longer or it was measured too long. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. The race course is measured accurately. It's been measured with a wheel. It's the watch that is inaccurate. In fact, on some of the devices that you buy, if you go onto the website, they tell you that there is an eight meter per kilometer inaccuracy on these devices. So while it can be great for training on race day, that adds up. And the further the race is, the more that will blow out. So in a race, do not use auto lap to tell you how you're running or the pace function on your GPS. What you've got to do in a race is actually physically lap your watch at every kilometer or mile, depending on, on where you are racing, and that will tell you how you are tracking against your goal so that you don't get late into the race and suddenly realize you're too far behind target to nail the goal that you set yourself. So there you have it. The bottom line is that GPS is not as accurate as you think. And if you think that we ran this test over two kilometers, you can imagine how that error will blow out over a half marathon, a marathon, and even an ultra. So on race day, you do not want to use your GPS as your ultimate guide to the distance covered. You need to use the kilometer markers en route. Similarly, if you're chasing a, a track PB, just know the track is accurate, your watch is not. This is not the only parameter on watches that's not absolutely accurate. So if you want to learn more about VO2 max and what your watch is telling you, watch the video on screen now.